Hey guys, welcome to Go Nintendo Nightly for April 25th, 2012. I'm Rami Cowboy. I'll be bringing you three stories today, which I consider to be the best, worst, and weirdest of the Nintendo news around the web. I also have a bonus story where we look at what you guys consider to be the best story of the day. Are they going to match up? I don't know. Let's find out. By the way, in the biz, they call this kind of intro a cold opening because you talk to your audience before the show's intro actually plays. If you watched yesterday's show, you know that we don't have an intro set up yet. Until we come up with something more official, I came up with a stupid idea that fans of 80s and 90s TV shows might appreciate. Hey, I know it's not the most amazing special effects you've ever seen, but when you're working with paint and Windows Movie Maker, I do what I can. That's going to change every day. I'll be using a different show. Uh, I'll take suggestions, so you can leave them wherever. I'll hunt them down. But anyway, let's get to the news. The first is the best story of the day, in my opinion. It may have taken the creators longer than they expected it to, but it finally happened. The creators behind the 100,000 strong to bring back Mega Man Legends 3 actually hit their 100,000 like on Facebook. So the campaign in that regard was a success. Now keep in mind, this is a fan campaign. Is anything going to come of it? We don't know. But having over 100,000 people show their support for Mega Man Legends 3 on the 3DS is a pretty big deal in my opinion. Capcom keeps telling us that they have plans for Mega Man's anniversary, but we haven't heard what those plans are. They just keep asking us to be patient. Mega Man fans have been nothing but patient, especially when it comes to Mega Man Legends 3. We were supposed to get a demo on the eShop at the eShop launch. It was a fan-supported game from the beginning, and then all of it just fell apart. Recently, we've been getting some good news, hearing that the eShop demo has a very slight chance of actually seeing release depending on how well a album sells. I don't know if that's actually going to happen, and the person behind the album says, don't take this as, if the album sells enough, we're going to put it on the eShop. Take it as, it's a possibility, which is better than what we've been hearing. So, hopefully Capcom will see this 100,000 likes and 100,000 strong campaign as a success. Look to the fans and say, you know what, they deserve to be thrown a bone. Mega Man fans are really passionate, and I don't think Capcom of Japan really understands how much fans in North America really like the character. I'm hoping that we see the Blue Bomber return really soon. I really want him to be around for another 25 years. So we'll see what happens. Keep your fingers crossed. But this was my favorite story of the day. It's sad to say, but I actually had a few stories that I was going to pick from for my worst story of the day. Uh, I went back and forth between this, but the one I'm going with actually popped up a little bit later in the day, and it comes from Game Informer. The title of the article should pretty much tell you what this is all about and why it's my worst. The title is, Why Xenoblade Chronicles Makes Me Want to Punch a Kitten. Sounds like something written by a fanboy, right? Well, that's how the whole article sounds. I'm going to read you a few choice sections of it, and I'll let you decide for yourself. Xenoblade Chronicles is an amazing game. The characters are engaging, the storyline is epic, and the fresh combat blends MMO-style cooldowns with the feel of an old-school turn-based RPG. However, the graphics. Dear God, the graphics. I can't decide whether the technical capabilities of the Wii make me want to projectile vomit or take a 12-gauge to my television. And it makes me angry enough to mail a severed unicorn head to Nintendo's main office because this game deserves better. It deserves better than gasping fish mouths bobbing up and down through beautifully crafted dialogue. It deserves better than jagged edged fuzzy textures comprising a breathtaking landscape set within the body of a fallen god. It deserves better than what you forced this game to be, Nintendo. That was all in caps, by the way. So obviously this is less about Xenoblade and more about the Wii and how this guy doesn't really care for the Wii. Uh, that's why later on in the article it moves away from Xenoblade and moves into how the Wii has ruined Nintendo's franchises. The author goes on to say, I, for one, am sick and tired of it. I'm tired of Nintendo having these awesome franchises and brilliant developers and shafting them with an absolute garbage can of a system. I'm tired of seeing Mario relegated to kitschy ideas because there's no horsepower under the Wii's hood. I'm tired of seeing Link fighting through the Temple of Brown textures and jagged edges. I'm tired of seeing games like Xenoblade Chronicles, games with a world vision that dwarfs the imagination and fills the mind with awe-inspiring 
jaw dropitude get thrown under the bus by Nintendo insisting on Grandma Waggle Party 4 as its core demographic. This sounds like something from a dark corner of the internet. Reads like a fanboy rant about the Wii from five years ago, but amazingly people still think like this. Uh, I don't think the Wii's a garbage can of a system, nor do I believe that it's ruined Nintendo's franchises. I think Super Mario Galaxy 1 and 2 are some of the highest points that the Mario series has ever seen, and a lot of reviewers agree with that. The same goes for The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. While reviewers are a little bit more mixed on that title, there's been heavy praise for the motion controls. You either get it or you don't, but it does show us what they can be for people that are willing to put in the time with it. While I did pick this as the worst story of the day, in my opinion, I still want to give the author some credit. Go over to the article, make sure you read it all the way through, then comment on it. You want to know what you're bashing before you actually bash it. This isn't a guy that writes for Game Informer often, and I'm sure this article is going to get a lot of attention on it, be that good or bad. Either way, this means Game Informer is going to stop this guy from putting up articles like this, or they're going to let him do a lot more. I'd say this would be the perfect time to cool down with a little bit of a funny and weird story, but we didn't have too much weird like that today. Who are you? I'm What the hell? no, just me, Dave Newell. I don't know if I should be laughing or scared or weirded out or crying. I feel like doing all of them. Video link for this is in the description. It's also on Go Nintendo. Uh, I guess if you like Kirby or Valve, you should check it out. As promised in yesterday's video, I'm going to bring you guys into each video from now on. Uh, today I decided to look at the highest rated story on Go Nintendo according to you guys. And over on the site you gave this article a plus 26. Yep. That's it. That picture right there. 3DS folders. Vita doesn't have folders. You gave it a plus 26. I'm not judging you at all. You're more than welcome to rate stars however you want. You guys really like this one. Which proves that the fanboy flame wars are still burning hotly. Uh, first comment came from Legend of Santiago and he says, That's all the 3DS needs. The stick man followed up by saying classy. Real classy. Big Lord followed up after that saying, PS3 has no games all over again. Ha! Zug Zug commented, Vita has no games as well. <laughs> so no games or no folders. And Daz says, apparently there's no such thing as an opinion, with a laughing face. That is not all the comments on the story. You can check the link in the description to check out what everybody else had to say. You can add in your own comment. You can give it a rating as well. I'd also like to say that while I posted this story, the comments from you guys are not necessarily my opinion. I actually happen to own a Vita, so you can start bashing me for being a Nintendo hater right now. And I think that brings us to the close of Go Nintendo Nightly for April 25th, 2012. Thank you so much for the support so far. Thank you for the comments and the kind words and everything you've been saying, the subscriptions. I really do appreciate all of that. I'll be back tomorrow with another three stories plus a bonus from you guys. I hope you like what you've seen so far. Send me suggestions, anything you want. And I'm going to end today's episode with words from one of my favorite game show hosts. Help control the pet population. Have your pets spayed or neutered. Goodbye, everyone. I'm going to change it up every day. Uh, some of you aren't going to get it at all. Some of you will appreciate it. <laughs> the creators of the 10,000 Strong for Mega Man Legends 3 actually hit their 10... 10,000. Not 10. We were supposed to get a demo on the eShop. It was supposed to be at the eShop launch, and then the whole thing just fell apart. But the important thing... thing <laughs> The characters are engaging, the storyline is epic, and the fresh combat blends MMO-style cool 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 <laughs> cooldowns. 
It deserves better than jagged edged fuzzy textures comprising a breakthrough. 